locally owned and operated for over 50 years, Delaware Camera is your number one spot for all your camera needs, education, accessories, printing, and more. Located at 2635 Delaware Avenue in Buffalo. Visit Camerspot.com. Hello, True Believers. Welcome to our latest live stream. I'm Mark, here as usual, and we're here with uh, my my uh, my uh, colleague, Stephen Neff. Say hey, Stephen. That's me. Hey, Stephen. <laughs> uh, hey, Mark. I'm, uh, I'm excited to be back. This is uh, my second time on uh, True Believers Podcast, so happy to be here. Awesome. So we're going to do a few different things. Our normal housekeeping things, we're going to... We're going to... Um, talk about this RGB light, which we got in recently from ProMaster. We're gonna talk about our regular stuff, our classes, stuff we do in the store. And Steven's gonna do a live sensor cleaning for you all. Should be interesting. <laughs> um, okay, so get the housekeeping out of the way. Um, we have classes. You can go for it. You're good, you're good. <laughs> We have classes coming up. So um, we have a Thursday class, which is our Canon landscape class. So it says it's sold out right now. We're gonna open up some new tickets for it in probably later today. So if you wanna sign up for that class, you'll be able to uh, after later this evening. So check that out. We're gonna have our, um, we're gonna have our regular cycle of classes in April, starting April 5th, we'll have our normal, um, Basic light exposure and composition, which Steven teaches on Zoom, so. <laughs> I, yeah, the, the classes we've been doing, we've done a couple series at this point, uh, and I, I think they're going really well. Uh, I've been pretty happy with, uh, yeah. with, with how it works. Uh, virtual classes, it's, it's, if you're watching the YouTube here, the virtual class that we do is very similar to uh, this setup where we have multiple camera angles, and you're gonna be able to see uh, live view through the camera. I'm going to be able to change camera settings and you will see in real time what's happening. Um, and it's a good, relatively small class sizes. So it's a good opportunity to have a uh, conversation if you have specific questions or goals, what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, the, the, I prefer the virtual classes in a lot of ways. Uh, there are some, some in-person, uh, yeah, I think we've, we've started the conversation of doing some in-person classes yeah. as well, but, uh, if, if for getting started, the basics, uh, the virtual class actually does really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, people have been asking about them, so hopefully we'll have them soon. Worst comes to worst, maybe we'll go outside into a park and have a, have a basic class, do something fun like that. That might be actually pretty cool. Like, we do like a basic, like, uh, nature photography class where we can kind of teach people about the basic things of their cameras and shoot have some fun, shoot some nature, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, some, some more hands-on photo walks. We've also been doing, uh, I've done a bunch of one-on-one -on -one classes, mm -hmm. uh, both virtual and in-person. Uh, those are a great opportunity to really, if you have specific questions about your camera, mm -hmm. your equipment, your goals, what you are trying to do, um, the photography world is filled with all kinds of equipment and options and trying to, uh, yeah, trying to figure out what the best option and what you what's best for you, uh, it's it's a lot to navigate. So um, that's what we're here to help with, and those those one-on-one uh, -on -one classes are a great opportunity yeah. for that. And we have some Tamron classes. Tamron did a class a while ago, which was very successful and very fun. They're coming back late April and late May. They're doing a travel photography class in late May, May or late April, late April twenty-sixth, and they're doing a capture hack experimental photography class on 524 so that should be interesting and fun as well they'll be virtual they're on eventbrite if you go to our website you can see that they're you can see you can get a ticket they're free all that good stuff what, what was that second class uh it was capture hacks experimental photography capture hacks okay. capture hacks sorry if i didn't right. say that clearly. i wanted to make sure I, okay so what do you think stuff. i what do you think i said uh, I didn't, I didn't get it. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Capture hacks. So, so different interesting ways to shoot different, uh, yeah, get it, getting outside the normal stuff. All right. I'm, yeah. I'm interested in that yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. I've been known to do some experimental photography in my, in my day. <laughs> so. All right. So we got, we have, so we got the class out of the way, you know, we do rentals. We're in the upstairs section of the store where we have all our tripods, lighting, 
rentable studio. So if you want to rent anything in the store, go to our website, you can rent stuff there, which we are always happy to rent stuff to you as well. Can you say something, Steve? Uh, so rentals, we can, uh, again, guidance, we can sort of, if you're not sure what you need, if you've got an event and you want to have a backup or you want to have uh, some additional capability, we can also help you out and kind of guide you to what rental might be best, what equipment might be best for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then also uh, printing the, the, in the lab. The lab is here open. Uh, we, we print film, we print negatives, uh, film, digital, whatever you've got, all different sizes up to a full 40 inch full bleed. So. Um, and we, we usually get stuff done within 24 hours as well. If you've got like um, film, aspiring new film photographers, we can scan stuff, email it to you um, within 24 hours usually. If it's color black, it might take a little bit longer, but we can get this stuff d turned over pretty quickly, so. Yeah, not shipping it out anywhere for, for color negative film. It's all processed right here in the store. So. Yeah, yeah. So let me yeah. get to this, uh, this fun thing. This I was uh, talking to Bill, who's a little bit camera shy, <laughs> last night when we were leaving the store. We were talking about showing this and how exciting this product is. It's a, it's a ProMaster RGB LED light, which is cool. It's um, If you need some, can some extra light for the top of your camera, you need some special effects lighting, this is what you need. I'm going to open it up right now and show you what it's all about. So in the box, you of course get your instruction booklet. Where am I, Will? On the, on the camera, right there? Okay. So we got your instruction booklet. We have the light, which is about the size. My phone's over there. But how big is this compared to like your phone, Steven? That is a little bit smaller than my phone. I have a large phone. But yeah. the fact that it's the size of a cell phone makes it very convenient uh, to, to put into a camera case or put into different bags that may have a pocket designed for a phone. Or into your back pocket. I know a lot of people put their phones in their back pockets, so you can put you can put this in your back pocket. And on that same note, with ProMaster, if you put this in your back pocket and you sit on it, we'll give you another one for free. We have a no-fault okay. one-year warranty on these things, so <laughs> keep that in mind. If if you break it, I, it's it's fairly durable. <laughs> yes, it's very it's very solid, very solid. So, so you get the light, you get this honeycomb grid, which if you're into uh, getting a nice light, nice um. Instead of a spread out beam of light, you're getting like a concentrated beam of light. And that's what the honeycomb, honeycomb grid will do for you. It also comes with this, uh, this mount. If you want to mount it onto a camera, it's got a, you want to do that? Mm -hmm. So you put it on there. So if you want to put it onto um, your camera, it's a hot shoe mount. If you want to put it like on a tripod or a light stand, it has a quarter 20 screw on it. So you can just put it on top of a light stand you want to do it that way which is pretty cool so it's pretty versatile so a couple of things with this thing I, I took some notes so I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be ashamed to read my notes okay <laughs> so <laughs> you get a you have it on right now so at full power you get an hour and a half of life um, it has it has your let's see what we got here as far as modes so so we have our can you see this one we got our bicolor mode, which, uh, let's see, kind of hard to handle with this. Let me just take it off so it's easier to show. Yeah. Oh, we gotta take that off now. Well, because I did it through the, there's a, there's a cutout in the grid to make that fit better. Yeah, makes sense. Um, but to remove the grid, you gotta take that off. So you've got your bicolor mode, so you can get, uh, you can get, you know, warmer and cooler. Can't say something to you. Point, point the back there towards Will. <laughs> Sorry, Will. What, 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 what? He wants, to, he wants to see the back of it. Oh, sorry. So you can see the controls on the back. It has a nice little display here. So, but you can change. This light is so hard. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm being, I'm, being, I'm being a little uh, baby here. So the, that's the... The color balance. You're just you're trying to hit it. You just hold the, the lever down. You don't have to press it. Oh, just, I was doing it earlier. To, I was doing it that way. I thought. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can incrementally step it up. So what? A you held bit. it. Yeah, but if you just hold it in one direction. Oh, you can maybe that's why I did earlier. Quickly cycle between the different <laughs> color temperatures. Thank you, Stephen. So you also have um, an RGB mode. So let me switch to that, where you can change your color temp, your colors. So. Goes from here to there and everywhere. 
Yeah, so in addition <laughs> to the, the traditional bicolor LED where you've got a daylight balance and you've got a, a, a tungsten balance or a warmer light, um, this also gives you the full RGB color uh, color cycle. And then also a bunch of special effects too. Yeah, right? so special effects are here. These are fun. So where it'll cycle through the different colors. You can get some flashing. Yeah. So if you're yeah if you're trying to add a add a practical light or add a add a light into a, a scene that you're recording, um, it's an inexpensive, um, great light to add a great great piece to add a little bit of light into the scene. Yeah. So this can be cool for video and such. You know. So if you're trying to make get that special look and it's portable, so you can you know. You can bring a few of these if you want to and add different effects in the different parts of the scene as well. So it's it's a very cool like tool for you know for doing video and such stuff like that. If you're using just the LED, you can use it for pictures as well. But you can you, whatever you want to use this for. It's very versatile. So you know, and here it is on top of my or not my R6, but I have an R6. But you can see how it fits on top <laughs> on top of the camera. <laughs> Sorry, Will. How much does this run, Steven? Do you remember? Uh, you've got it in front of you. you got your notes. <laughs> I didn't put the price on the notes. 100 bucks. 100 bucks. <laughs> yeah, so. So, so in comparison to last week, you looked at the Godox tube lights, yeah. which are nice and, and, and bigger and, and similar in that they're RGB, mm -hmm. but a little bit more expensive to get started. So this is a great light, great small size to be able to um, get started with, uh, yeah, get started with an LED light and have the full RGB. Um, and then you can sort of build lights around it. If you're doing macro work, you're going to start to add additional lights. But mm -hmm. um, from just sort of a good baseline to build out from, yeah, um, yeah the, that ProMaster RGB LED is a, a great little piece. You can all, it's also good, too, to have the smaller things because it's easier to carry around. You know, with the big tube lights, you know, it's kind of a spectacle, you know, when you carry those around. So if you have these little lights, a lot easier to run and gun, you know, get, get around with stuff. Keep it in your car at all times, which is also cool. Because, um, you know, if you have this stuff on you, you're more likely to use it. So that's why it's good to have this stuff on you all the time or in your bag all the time. And with this, you can keep it in your camera bag, you know, in your car, wherever. The tube lights, a little bit, little bit much to carry, but, you know, they do a whole different job for you. So that is the ProMaster Chroma CL36 RGB LED light. So if you want to come in and check it out, we have... Say it one more time. <laughs> We have them in the store. So we're going to get to the main event of this live broadcast. We're going to have Steven go through a sensor cleaning. All right, so digital camera sensor cleanings. Uh, with film photography, you generally didn't need to worry about dust getting on your sensor, your frame of film, because every time you take a picture, um, uh, every, every time you shoot, every time you take a picture, uh, that frame of film is moving across the film plane and moving to the next shot. So any dust that had gotten on there is only on that one single image. Um, if you're looking at on a digital sensor, if you get a piece of dust on it, then you're gonna you're gonna have little dark blurry spots uh, at the same spots all the way through. Um, Will, can you give me my my feed here? All right, the number four. Sorry, there we go. Um, so the dust appears as a little uh, darker blurry spot. Um, at every point, or every picture, as you go and start to cycle through images, you're gonna start to see little dark spots. And so here I've got a picture of a tree branch. And as you look in the background on the sides, you can start to see in the sky, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here, you can start to see uh, these little dust spots. And they're in the same spot. Doesn't matter as I move the frame around, right? The stick is moving into different positions. Those little spots of dust are in the same positions on the frame every time I take a picture. So the, um, yeah, so we, we need to clean that digital sensor. Uh, with DSLRs, you'd have a, uh, a shutter that would come down and cover the sensor. 
uh, in between as you're changing lenses and that would help a little bit with dust. But now with mirrorless cameras and going into cameras that actually don't even have shutters, um, we can run into issues where uh, the, the sensors can, uh, if they're exposed to open air, they can get dust in on them. And so uh, how we want to clean them, uh, we're going to go through a series of steps. Um, so first and foremost, the camera internally most likely has a, a, a sensor cleaning mode. Uh, and so in the camera's setup menu, uh, if you dial down into uh, the automatic cleaning function, usually it's either using the shutter with a puff of air or it's sh shaking the sensor if it's an image stabilized camera, uh, trying to do something to try and get any dust that's on there off. It's trying to shake it off. So that's gonna be the first, first and foremost. If you notice dust on the camera, go into the camera and use the, the internal cleaning mode. Uh, the second step is going to be air, um, using a rocket blower. So I've got my camera here. I'm going to uh, invert the camera. And generally, any time I have a lens off the camera, I wanna hold the camera so that the sensor is facing down. I don't wanna catch dust, right? I don't wanna, having the, like, gravity's gonna bring dust, all those little tiny air particles floating in the air, are slowly gonna settle onto that sensor. I don't want that. So anytime I take the lens off of the camera, I'm gonna point the camera down. Um, I'm using, this is, a, this is the rocket blower that I, I personally use and prefer. Um, it's got a rubber tip on the end, just in case uh, I get a little too close to the sensor and bump into it. It's not plastic. I'm not worried about scratching it as much. Uh, this guy also has a filter on it. I'm not sure how much the filter's actually doing. It's, it helps a little bit but more so it's just a, a big uh, rocket blower as opposed to some of the other little guys. Uh, this is a, a travel one that I have. Um, again, it does have a rubber tip, but the airflow, I, I like the amount of air that I can get out of this. So I'm gonna invert the camera and I'm just going to try and blow any dust that I have in there out. So give it a couple puffs and uh, I've got a couple tools that I can use to look at it. Um, so I've got a, this is a sensor scope that I can actually use to go in and look at the sensor close up to see if there's any dust on it. Uh, here I've got my, my lens that we can line this up with and take a look and see if we end up with any dust on that sensor. And looking at it from a distance, I can see I still do have a couple spots. So the next step in my cleaning process is gonna be to use a brush or a dry wand. Um, so this is a lens pen Senso Clear brush. Uh, it don't use a lens pen, uh, like a normal carbon lens pen. This is a specific uh, sensor cleaning pen. Uh, it's called Senso Clear. This is designed for a sensor, not for a lens. Make sure that as you're cleaning your sensors, we're not using lens cleaning equipment to clean it because they're two different things. And we're, we, we have two, we're, we're looking for a couple different features. So this little pen here does have a little soft microfiber tip on it that I can use to go in and, and spot up any larger dust that may not have come off from using the, uh, from using the pen here. So if I can see there's one little spot in there, eh, there's a bunch of spots. So I'm gonna, I can go in and try and pick those up. If that's not working, I do have, um, I've used in the past, I've sort of fallen out of favor with them, uh, gel sticks. And so these are little wands, again, that have uh, sticky material on the end. Uh, and you can use those to go in and pick them up. I haven't found a new manufacturer for these that I like. Um, there's a couple out, out, out there that I haven't tried, but um, the, the Senso Clear pen to pick stuff up, I've used that more often. Uh, and then the final step, if we have uh, oil or dust or sp spots that are just not coming up with any dry cleaning solutions, uh, then we go to a wet cleaning. Um, I use the, the Delkin sensor safe system, um, which consists of uh, wand, the, these sensor wands, uh, each individually packed. You're only gonna use it once. Um, and uh, a sensor cleaning solution. Uh, we wanna use, again, we're not using a lens cleaning solution. This is alcohol free. 
uh, non-conductive, and uh, it's designed specifically to eva evaporate very, very quickly without leaving behind any streaks. Um, we want to use this very sparingly as we're cleaning. So um, the, the sensor swabs come in multiple sizes, depending on the sensor size of your camera. So this is a large, larger size for a full frame camera. This is a smaller size for an APS-C size sensor. Um, we want to use the right swab for our camera's sensor because we only want to make one pass. We, won't, we don't want to have to go back and forth across the sensor. We, we want to be able to clear off the whole sensor in just one pass because if we have to go along one side and then the other, we're going to end up with a streak line in between. We're going to end up with, uh, yeah, headaches. Sensor cleaning isn't fun. I, I don't enjoy it. I don't know that I've met too many people that do enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's something we have, we have to do um, because uh, we can end up with dust on our sensors. So um, I think I'm ready to go to a live cleaning and I'm gonna do it. So uh, this is my own personal Nikon Z6. So uh, I, I thought about using a store camera, but I said, no, <laughs> I'm going to use my own camera. It's going to jump um, in the deep end, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to start with two little tiny drops going onto the, uh, onto the swab, sort of right in the middle towards the bottom. Oh, I got a third drop in there. I'm going to let it drip down to the edge. All right. And... Now, as the, uh, the bottom of that swab starts getting coated, I am going to very lightly, it's a very light touch. I'm not using lots of pressure here. All right, and I'm gonna go that same direction. Pretty good. This edge here. I'm get all the way into that edge. All right. It's not pressure, right? That's one of, one of the easiest mistakes to make is to start pushing down because pushing one, you're gonna push too much of that liquid out, and you're gonna get a lot of liquid on the sensor it's going to end up streaking, or if you're pushing too much, those little tiny specks of dust, you can actually push down into the sensor and drag them across. Yes, the swab is soft and is designed not to damage the sensor, but if you get a little piece of dust under the swab and push it down and drag it across the sensor, there's a risk to damaging your, your camera's sensor. So um, that's that's my cleaning process. The, the two pieces that I I recommend, uh, again, this is the ProMaster Clean Air Filtered Air Blower. Um, I like it because it's a larger size. The filter is nice. The tip is great. Lots of air pressure. One of the don'ts in this uh, setup is don't use canned air. Please, please, please don't use canned air. Um, right, what, one of the things that we said about cleaning your sensor is you want to hold the camera upside down. When you take a can of canned air and hold it upside down to try and blow into the camera, you're going to get the propellant that's going to blow out. And it's, uh, it is a liquid that is compressed and as it's expanding, gets very, very cold. And it's a really good way to damage the camera, damage the sensor, get all kinds of uh, streaks and residue onto your sensor. So please don't use canned air. Use, use a good, uh, rocket brush. If you had an old film cleaning kit with a little tiny cleaning brush, this is something very, very different uh, using a rocket air blower. Uh, and the price range, it's anywhere between about $15 and $30 uh, for, for a rocket blower. The sensor cleaning kits uh, generally range between about $35 and about uh, $85, depending on what pieces you're getting and how many different wands you're getting in the kit. Um, uh, the, the, the Delkin Sensor Safe Kit, that's the one that I, uh, I use and recommend. That's the one that we carry here at the store. We have a couple other different options as well, but that's also the one that we use here in the store for the cleanings that we do. So if after the presentation here, you are a little too intimidated to tackle cleaning your own sensor, uh, sensor cleaning, 
<laughs> Mark is, is a little too intimidated <laughs> to clean his own sensor. Uh, sensor cleaning is a surface, service that we offer here at the store. Uh, for $50, generally we can do them in, uh, certainly within 24 hours we should be able to get a, a sensor clean turnaround. If you do need a rush job, you've got a, you've got a job coming up tonight and, and you've got some, some sensor issues, uh, depending on who is in the store, what staff is available, we should be able to, to help you out and get a, a sensor clean for you. So that's, that's my sensor cleaning presentation. Very nice, Stephen. Here's one question. Should, should someone not blow on their sensor? Um, no, you should not blow on your sensor. Uh, I just want to tell people so, you know, so they know. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, when you're, like, we said that this is actually a filtered, this, this, uh, this blower has, a, has an actual HEPA, HEPA filter on it. Um, when you're just blowing, uh, you, you're going to end up spitting on your sensor. Yeah. It's inevitable. Maybe not every time. You might you might be able to say, "Oh, it's just, uh, yeah," uh, but it's going to happen, and yeah. and it's going to be more of a headache to try and clean it up. You're going to go through several wands, right? When you get mm -hmm. grease or liquid or anything, even just little tiny specks of stuff that mm -hmm. get onto the onto a sensor, uh, yeah, you can have a repair tech tearing their hair out trying to get that sensor back to clean without streaks, without dust. Because every time you do it, you're just moving it around. And yeah. so it's it's a light touch and, and yeah, don't don't blow on your sensor, so. Yeah, so I guess everyone should definitely have one of these just because. A, a rocket blower of some sort. For yeah. Lens, lens cleaning, dust, any any and all kinds of, uh, of cleaning tool, uh, the rocket blowers are, are definitely something that I would have in my bag. Yeah, definitely. I definitely carry around one of those myself. And that's the only thing I'll do. I, I don't get into this stuff. I'm, I'm far too afraid to uh, get into that stuff. I will fully admit it, or I might live with the dust. You know what I mean? <laughs> so there, there are, so <laughs> where, where you're gonna see dust more often is uh, landscape shots, mm -hmm. shots that you have, you're shooting with a, a small aperture, right? A larger aperture number, small mm -hmm. aperture. You end up with a larger depth of field. Yeah. That depth of field is, is effective at the outer edge of your subject, uh, but that also is affecting the depth of field around the sensor. So when you have a, um, yeah, when, when you're putting, when you have a larger depth of field, a smaller aperture, you, you end up being able to see the dust on that sensor more. So that the field of view gets larger around the sensor and so you can see the dust more. Uh, and, and then in bright skies, in my, like my example images that I shot yesterday, um, I just went out, pointed the camera up at the sky, set it to an F22, and shot a whole series of images. And very clearly, you could see all the dust on my sensor. So mm -hmm. um, I've, been, I've, I've been on a couple trips and have not cleaned that sensor recently. So now it's clean and good. I'm, I'll probably take another quick look at it before we close it up. But uh, yeah, it's, it's good that I have a clean sensor now. Here's one question people might ask. Um, can you clean the sensor on a point and shoot camera? I, if, so point and shoot meaning it's not an interchangeable Correct, lens yeah. camera, mm -hmm. then no, right? There's no way to open the camera up to get into that sensor. But a mirrorless camera, a DSLR, any interchangeable lens camera system, mm -hmm. yes, you can clean the sensor and you should be checking to make sure. If, you, if you're not somebody that shoots uh, with a, a large depth of field at smaller apertures, uh, right? If you're, Mark, uh, most of you are shooting, uh, I'm assuming you're, you're, shoot, you're second shooting weddings in your professional, right? You're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're shooting candids at weddings. So you're shooting with the, the R6 and that beautiful 28 to 75 F2. You're shooting, I, I, I assume you're shooting that one pretty much wide open a lot of the time. Pretty much, yeah. You're not gonna notice dust. So every once in a while, Go out and shoot a landscape, something at a, at a, at a larger depth of field, smaller aperture, mm -hmm. um, just to check and see if you do have any dust issues. Because you know that the next time you go out to shoot, you're gonna at, like you're gonna wind up shooting the big wedding party shot and the big landscape with everybody there, and there's gonna be dust all over it because you're so used to shooting with a shallow depth of field and not yeah. noticing it. True, so, true, true. Definitely want to check it every once in a while. True, true, true. Awesome. Is that yeah. our true believers? I think it, it is, but I have one final tip for all you true believers out there. A lot of us are on 
Facebook, Instagram, wherever we have our business, some, you know, just our personal pages, our business pages that we've built over time. If you have a Facebook page or an Instagram page, make sure you use two-step authentication. Because I had a friend recently who's had a Facebook page for 10 years and it got hacked, her business page is gone now. So make sure you protect your pages and your social media presence. Even if you're not professional, you know, you know, we put stuff on social media because we want people to see our work and connect with people. So it sucks when you have, you put all that work and then it's just gone and, you know, in a matter of moments. So two-step authentication is very important. Strong passwords, two-step authentication. Absolutely. Definitely. definitely. Yeah. All right. So. Maybe we'll have more tips next time. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching and we appreciate you checking us out every week. Thank you. Locally owned and operated for over 50 years, Delaware Camera is your number one spot for all your camera needs, education, accessories, printing, and more. Located at 2635 Delaware Avenue in Buffalo. Visit Cameraspot.com.